Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everybody's doing well here. So after a long, and I mean long stretch of severe weather over the last five days here, where we've been, where we were live literally five days in a row here, or at least made an attempt to do it, we're finally slowing down here. We're going to have a little bit of a break in the action before severe weather returns here. This does look like down the line we have another multi-day outbreak in the works here. This is towards the 25th and the 26th. There are some days after that that are still to be determined, but at least in the short term, we're getting a break here. But we are going to talk about these days up ahead here. So make sure you're hitting that like button. If you're new to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button as well. And also make sure you're hitting that share button. Some good information here ahead in regards to the medium to long range here. So we'll start out by going into the brass tax here, which is going to be day six and day seven here. So this is the 25th that we're looking at starting out. This is towards the southern plains and also towards the central plains here, mainly towards Kansas, Oklahoma, and parts of Texas right now. 15% slight risk area on day six. Don't see that too often unless you have a good bit of confidence in severe weather. This is one of these days where all hazards could be possible does kind of remind me a little bit of the monday setup i would not be surprised to see a northern mode pop up over here towards maybe nebraska and south dakota once again just like last week this took a little bit longer to come into effect but that was actually the more dominant mode out of the two i do anticipate that we might see a cap right here you have to keep in mind that no two storm systems are the same Whereas we had a cap that inhibited a lot of activity over towards Oklahoma and Kansas until late, late in the evening. This may be different. The models are models have had a hard time picking up on those lately. So, like I said, it's a little bit variable, but for right now, we're going to mainly put an attention on and I'm going to actually extend a little bit on this. But what I would say this region here, maybe even pushing this section a little further back to the west here, but this area over here i would keep an eye on also towards central nebraska and maybe even parts of maybe even south central south dakota try saying that fast a bunch of times but anyway though as we go to day seven here we're look where we are once again very familiar area over towards iowa once again over towards central missouri and parts of illinois wouldn't even rule out parts of southern Wisconsin even getting into the mix here with this setup. So with that in mind here, make sure you're staying weather aware towards these regions. It's that time of year, simply put. No other way to really go about it. And then, on, of course, on day eight, predictability is too low. Jury's still out on that. I do think there's a chance for severe weather. But actually, I'm interested in the day after this as well. So like I said, pattern is still very active right now. So we're going to have to just kind of play things by ear and go on from that point but this is what we're looking like with the gfs here a little bit wacky we're also com making comparison with the year here on the bottom left corner but this is what we're looking like in the short range here this is of course the next couple of days you can see there's not really too much in the way of troughs here and the troughs that do develop are not amped or not amped up or set up for severe weather at this current time it's really once we get towards Wednesday where we start to see our next player come into the picture here. And it's going to be this storm system right here. After this storm system rolls in, and this is, like I said, I really think that this threat kicks in later in the evening, probably a little bit after sunset. I would say that's when we would start to get our storms to fire over here. I do think that either of these areas whether it's towards south central oklahoma or maybe southwestern oklahoma over towards central kansas could come into play early in the afternoon but i'm kind of favoring this look here where we could see more of maybe eastern kansas nebraska and maybe even again depending on how this trough evolves towards southern parts of south dakota and then as this continues to progress we eventually see our area of interest shift over towards the midwest once again now where as when they previously issued this this was making a little bit of a sharper turn to the northeast it's kind of uh, the angle of which it's making its turn is broadened out a little bit so the game might change here in regards to where this threat area is issued they don't post as many outlooks on this so this 
area is subject to change like we were talking about earlier on the day seven slight risk here may push a little further to the north and east hence why i was saying more so that we might see parts of southern wisconsin maybe even towards milwaukee also chicago coming into play here like i said this time frame though 150 hours out a lot of different variables coming into play with that there so i'll we'll have to see how the uh, forecast evolves from that point and then with this storm system moving out, I see a very clear signs of a trough ejection to follow that. So Saturday and Sunday could also be days of interest as well. So our day eight and day nine threat, we're going to have to be watching these. Now, unfortunately, Storm Prediction Center doesn't go out that far. It's kind of pointless too because things can evolve very quickly with these storm systems. And looking out at this range, it's kind of it's kind of tough to really get a good read on these forecasts here so with that being said but even so there's still some very clear signals to me that this is going to be another storm system that we're going to have to watch here and this is going to be a big part of how we close out the month then towards monday we'll see this storm system roll out start to see some ridging and this will be a sign of more shower and storm activity could be a couple of marginal risks to close out the month of april here and then we may have a couple other opportunities of a similar deal before the next big system rolls in, which is going to be at the very end of this model run here. Now, normally I don't like talking about these systems at the very end of the GFS run because 384 hours out, that's equivalent to 16 days. A long time to wait. So can't really, can't really hone in on this too much at all. Kind of pointless to do so because by the next run this may not even be here so i'll say that i'm watching the storm system as it rolls in around the time frame of the sixth but this is for a storm system that hasn't even formed yet so that being said we're just going to kind of move on to the next thing from there so let's go ahead and look at our moisture returns from the gfs and then we'll also have the temperature map here on the bottom left corner to go along with it what we're looking for mainly is that increase in surface temperatures and moisture content to go with it here. So our moisture return is going to be coming from the Gulf here. So if you see that certain temperatures kind of coinciding with that and you see it along where we had that jet stream kind of dipping into this region here, that is, I would consider that as a highly favored point of interest here. <laughs> and it's very interesting uh, sometimes how these moisture returns can be shaped here. All I'll say is just take a look at that. I'll let your mind wander there. Keep in mind, I am a metalhead after all, so I'm a little bit mischievous. But that being said, you can see as we head from Thursday into Friday here, we already have that moisture return in the first area that we were talking about over towards central Oklahoma into Kansas here. And then we continue to see that moisture back to the north here. And then this will coincide with our threat for the following day. Like I said before, though, what happens on a lot of Thursday will determine what will happen on Friday. So this is not set in stone. But even so, I do see a good bit of evidence that we will have ample moisture, ample ingredients for severe weather once again. Now, the reason why I think that they haven't really gone with the slight risk being pushed further to the north here towards, let's say, Chicago, maybe Milwaukee right now is because right now we're not really seeing a good indicator of moisture being pumped into that region just yet. But this can easily advance all the way towards that area as well. So the timing of this is still variable, like I said before, so a lot of time to go. So. It wouldn't surprise me if eventually this becomes an area that is favorable. So, like I said, just going to have to kind of play it out and wait and see what happens next. Here's our storm system to follow. And like I said, definitely seeing a signal once again for severe weather, in particular towards Iowa. These guys have been getting hit pretty hard lately, and we're going to have to keep an eye on them once again as we head into next week. And really impressive moisture returns. I even think maybe we could get some uh, corn transpiration coming into play here yes the crops can produce what's called sweat corn sweat and slang or transpiration and this can help amplify the severe weather threat here we are getting towards that time of year anyway so it's not really surprising or too surprising to see that but that being said here as we continue to roll forward that storm system rolls out 
we still get left over with plenty of moisture and this eventually gets wrung out in the form of those thunderstorms that we were talking about over towards the central plains towards the southeast getting more towards that summertime setup where you could see maybe even a few popcorn storms some of which occasionally can pulse severe but with that moisture staying in place here especially with it getting warmer it's gonna make for some uncomfortable temperatures here i'm sorry of course we those of us in the southern states in particular you know how it is during this time of year it's just getting towards that time really and it's kind of tough for me too because as plenty of you know my job is an outside job anyway though the last thing that we're going to go ahead and take a look at here are our moisture returns or not our moisture <laughs> We're going to take a look at our simulated radar here. Brain's not working, folks. Sorry. But we're going to go ahead and look at these first few days here. Like I said, limited shower and storm activity here and there. But it's really when we go beyond that point where we start to see evidence of that next storm system coming in. This is towards Thursday morning. And it's really not going to be till later in the evening where we start to see that setup for severe weather coming into play here. Right now, GFS is kind of favoring more storm initiation right around that Nebraska-Kansas line here. Then eventually working its way out to the Midwest. Could see potentially two rounds of storms. The main round would be in the morning, and then there's a secondary round that could pop up here that we'll have to keep an eye on for Friday evening. And then from beyond that point, we wait one more day, and then we see the next storm system come into play, and this is going to... It's kind of tricky with the timing here. It looks like this could be a Sunday, Sunday night type threat over here towards Iowa. Could be a multicellular mode with that. As of right now, of course, the time frame that we're looking at, kind of hard to tell. We're getting close to that 10 day range here. And then as we go forward, like here are those shower and storm chances that I was talking about to close out the month and start out in the month of May. And then we continue to see that all the way up until the end of the model run here. And then our new storm system potentially introducing itself on the 6th. But pretty quick video here, just giving a quick overview of what we're seeing in the medium to long range here. Make sure you guys are staying tuned and staying weather aware, especially if you're over towards the Midwest. More active times are ahead. We're getting a little bit of a break in the action, which is nice. Don't let your guard down. That being said, I will see you guys with another video tomorrow. Until then, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have an awesome rest of your Saturday.